about Joe Rogan. We had a big announcement from uh, from from uh, Joe Rogan, Joe Brogan, uh, Bro Rogan, as some people have known to call him, uh, the Everyman's Bro, as as I used to call him, but no longer no longer will I call him the Everyman's Bro, uh, based on based on this this story here. Um, so earlier this week, we saw a story. where Joe Rogan signed an exclusive licensing agreement with Spotify um, that was apparently for over $100 million, uh, which checks out because Spotify has been paying a shit ton of money to acquire a bunch of podcasts. Um, that's, um, that's just what they do. That's just what they've been doing. Uh, they bought a company called Anchor, which uh, which used to host my podcast, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, and if you've been paying attention to all my videos, then you know exactly what the fuck I'm going to talk about. Um, but uh, Joe, um, they they acquired uh, they acquired Anchor for uh, over a hundred million dollars as well. They Gimlet Media is something else they acquired for over a hundred million dollars. Um, they uh so they've been doing this they they've been trying to exclusively expand their podcast uh library and become a becoming a not just a music platform but also a podcasting platform i think that's what they really want here's what's peculiar about this in february of 2020 um rogan basically said because apparently a lot of his fans i, I didn't know this uh but he's not on spotify for for podcasting I didn't know this because I don't listen to podcasts on Spotify. I think I've listened to like two or three podcasts on Spotify because my buddy's podcast, uh, my friend Dan Brady's podcast is on Spotify. So so I listen, I listen to it there. Um, and, um, you know, I, so I didn't know Joe Rogan was not on Spotify. I, I, I use I use the, the Stitcher app, um, you know, uh, when I when I when I do listen to podcasts, I use that app. I haven't used it in quite some time. Or I go to the website of the podcast itself. Um, so Joe Rogan is on YouTube. So most of the time, I either listen to him on YouTube or if I'm driving, which hasn't really been a thing lately uh, because my tours have been slowed down. I would listen to it through the Stitcher app, right? That's that's what I would do. I didn't I didn't even know that he wasn't on fucking Spotify. But apparently he's not, and a lot of his fans, um, excuse me, getting a little dust in my eye. Uh, a lot of his fans have been complaining about it. They've been saying that, uh, you know, they, they want him on Spotify, and he said that he doesn't want to be on Spotify. And this is, goes back to February 2020 is what I read, uh, that he, he, he doesn't want to go on Spotify because they don't treat their artists properly, which they don't. They only give uh, their artists um, fractions of a penny per stream. So for someone like me, I get like four dollars from Spotify every year. <laughs> some are, are like some ridiculous small amount of money. Uh, I don't I don't make shit from Spotify. I mean, my stuff's on that on that platform because you know it's like that's that's how it's it, it's it's more of a notoriety thing, I guess. To be like, oh my god, you're on Spotify? That's fucking crazy. Like getting on iTunes was like a big fucking deal. You know, like if you if you were a, a touring comedian that got your shit on iTunes, they put that on all the posters to be like, iTunes guy, he's an iTunes guy, you know, and it was just like it's not that hard to fucking get on iTunes or Spotify, like, but it is become the like this weird status thing of um, and then people get, get like they did with Joe Rogan. They get mad if you're not on fucking Spotify because they're like, it's it's not it's so much harder to find your shit. But it's like that's why I fucking put my stuff on Bandcamp because it's just a better platform. And I get a lot more through people finding my shit and starting uh, playlists and radios from Pandora than I do from Spotify as an artist, right? I get way more from that. And I think Pandora is partnered with Sirius or some shit. I don't know. All this stuff is it starts to get more complicated and you know who part who's partnering with who it's very easy to lose track of um so rogan moved to has moved to to spotify for uh, uh, over a hundred million dollars it's a licensing agreement which basically says <laughs> his entire library is now going to move to spotify um and throughout the rest of the year 
he will continue to put out his interviews and his show on YouTube and keep it on all the other platforms. And then in December, it'll be exclusively on Spotify. And then it'll be off all the other platforms. So now there's an exclusivity contract and that exclusivity contract is a hundred over a hundred million dollars for Joe Rogan. Here's my problem with it. He, you know, Joe, Joe Rogan has come out and said, Oh, they're not going to control what I say. I still get to pick my guests. I still get to, you know, choose all the things that I'm doing and I'm, I'm saying and all that sort of stuff. But here's the deal. You guys, um, Spotify is not above censorship, just like YouTube wasn't above censorship, um, and throttling people's pages, um, from, from top to bottom, by the way, and on the left and on the right, YouTube was doing this. We know this. We've seen a bunch of commentators that are much bigger than I am that have talked about this. I have been throttled on YouTube several times, even through throughout this pandemic for talking about you know, things against the establishment. If I go against establishment politics, or if I say something that, um, you know, like talked about UBI, as I just did, it will throttle the fucking page. If it, and, and if it picks up steam, especially like there are certain videos that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big, I'm just not a big fuck. I'm, I'm not famous. I know that. So if I get a couple hundred hits on, on Facebook and I get a handful of hits on, on YouTube, I, I think that's a, a success for me because that's just where I am. Theoretically, my videos on Facebook should be getting upwards of 3,000 views if it sends it to every single person that likes my page, but they fucking don't. Theoretically, every single video on YouTube should get about three to 400 views uh, based on how many subscribers I have, but they don't send it out to all my subscribers all the time. I have people that have subscribed to my YouTube channel that find videos like a month ago and, and you know, they're, they're like, how, how did I not fucking see this when this came out? It's because YouTube doesn't show it to people. It doesn't come up on the recommended lists, which is why it's so stupid. But and that's why I keep saying like, hit the like button, hit the share button, do the subscribing thing. Like it, because it, because for small fries like me that, that are getting throttled, like that's a thing that they need to do. Um, so platforms like YouTube will, so you know, will throttle your pages. They will stop the views. They will stop recommending you to people that are subs even subscribed to you. I know that happens to me with pages that I'm subscribed to, like the Jimmy Dore Show, uh, or Abby Martin's Empire Files, or Lee Camp's Redacted Tonight, uh, even Ron Placone's Get Like Get Your News On with Ron Graham Elwood, Kim Iverson. All these people that I listen to that talk about these. Um, it's quote unquote fringy alternative topics, which are just like, these are things we should be discussing on a daily basis. Anyway, we should be discussing these ideas. We shouldn't be talking about fucking cat videos all the time, you know? Um, but it's not just YouTube and Facebook that do this censorship sh thing. Spotify has done it too. And they did it to me. I, and and I'm a small fry. Again, I'm 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 a small fish in a very big pond. I understand that, um, but that's why they choose the small fish because the small fish, even if it makes a lot of noise, isn't going to get heard by that many people. Uh, but I'm lucky to have friends that are um, that have much larger presences and much more famous shows than I do uh, that help me out. So if if you if you missed it uh, back in March. My entire podcast library was deleted by Spotify. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Spotify owns a company called Anchor, anchor.fm. That's where my podcast was being hosted. Um, I have a band uh, called Old Game. They actually gave me this, this thank you card because I bought a bunch of their pins because I like, I like collecting pins. So I bought their pin collection um, that I put on like jackets and stuff. Uh, old game gave me permission to use one of their songs as my intro song. So if you watch my clips on, on, on YouTube or Facebook or listen to it on, um, on a audio podcasting platform, you will hear it. I don't know if this was the claim or not, but somebody put a copyright claim, which is so weird because that means that old game would have had to put a copyright claim 
which I know they didn't fucking do because they gave me permission to use their stuff. Not only that, but I credit them every single time, every single episode, every single thing that I do. You can even see it in the description of this video that I put their link. I credit them every single time. So it didn't make any sense as to why I was getting this copyright claim. Contacted Spotify for two days straight, at, trying to ask them about, um, hey, what what's this copyright claim? Why are you guys saying there's a copyright claim? I can't upload any, uh, any content uh, onto my podcasting thing. What's going on with this copyright claim? I got no answers. 48 hours later, I get an email at, a, at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, I'm on tour. I'm on the road. I'm in the middle, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, this thing. And uh, I get an email that says that my entire podcast library, over two, 300 episodes that I've, that I've, I've been doing these shows for five years, gone. They deleted it under the guise of a copyright claim that they never explained to me what that copyright claim was. The, the last two episodes I threw up were pro Bernie Sanders and pro Tulsi Gabbard episodes. And it, your opinion of those candidates is not really important in this situation. You can dislike those candidates. You can disagree with them. You can disagree with what I'm saying. The point being is that they deleted my shit because they have an agenda. My agenda didn't fit with them. They made up a claim that they never explained and then deleted my entire fucking library. Fortunately, fortunately, um, you could have still gone to Stitcher or iTunes um, and, and still found my podcast. They were still active on those sites, but I couldn't upload any new content because the hosting site was anchor.fm, which is a Spotify company. So if Spotify deems that something isn't right, everything on anchor.fm could just disappear in the blink of an eye. So now you have someone, and that's just me, right? I'm a small fry with a couple thousand people on my Facebook page, a couple hundred people on my YouTube channel, and a handful of people that listen to my audio stuff. That's That's sort of the reality of it. My podcast, when it was on Anchor, was getting roughly 100 to 200 downloads a month, a month on that platform. They weren't helping me out in the least fucking bit. I moved my podcast. So basically the way I got my podcast back is uh, Hard Lens Media uh, talked about, did, did a whole thing. Uh, they interviewed me talking about this level of censorship and Lee Camp, my, who's a good friend of mine, um, you know, he kind of made it public about uh, what happened. And, uh, and all of a sudden anchor wanted to get my podcast back and they, and so they kept saying it's a copyright claim. I have all of these emails and screen caps and all this stuff. And I want to do a big, big uh, piece about it. I, I, I ranted about it on my page, uh, but I want to write a thing about it. And I think I'm going to write a thing about it, um, here in the, in, in, in the coming weeks and, and things of that sort. Um, but, uh, you know, Lee did a tweet. There's a bunch of people that commented on it. And all of a sudden, Anchor was interested in getting my podcast back up as quickly as possible. And then they changed their tune like that. It was no longer about a copyright claim, but it was a glitch in their servers. That's what it became. A glitch in their servers is why my podcast disappeared. Uh, and then I have a separate podcast called Taboo Table Talk. And they were like, look, that one's still there. And I was like, that's not the right fucking podcast. So I went through this whole big fucking thing. Joe Rogan talks to controversial people all the time. He says that they don't control what he's going to say, and they probably don't. But let's say Joe Rogan has a particularly controversial figure, um, and they don't like Spotify. And they start talking about this shit that Spotify does. And they're, and they're talking about how Spotify doesn't treat their artists properly. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm, I'm about to cover right now, they start talking about it. Uh, and, and Joe Rogan brings them up uh, and he does an interview with them. And, uh, you know, and uh, Spotify goes, yeah, this is ridiculous. And then, uh oh, Joe Rogan, you went with, against our content uh, creation. 
are, are uh, you violated our terms and services. Uh-oh. Boom. Rogan's podcast disappears. Or that episode disappears. Or that episode gets throttled. Doesn't get shown to people. What does Joe Rogan do then? It's, it's a very, very strange thing. Um, and realistically, the, this, this acquisition of Joe Rogan, and I think some other, The Ringer, I'm not familiar with this podcast, but, I, but uh, again, it's a, it's a podcast that apparently has a pretty large following, uh, has also been purchased uh, as part of a licensing agreement uh, by Spotify for over a hundred million dollars. They're, they're spending over a hundred million dollars in, in doing this sort of stuff. Right. Um, so, uh, this basically is a way for Spotify to help itself, uh, gain a lot. Of, I think this is a, a more positive move for Spotify than it is for Joe Rogan. If, if you want my opinion, but I, I also think like Joe Rogan is cashing out. Because, again, February, he was like, no, I'm not going to go to Spotify because they don't fucking pay their artists. And all of a sudden, he gets a, over $100 million. Um, or that so says the reporting, right? Um, all of a sudden, then he moves to this platform that he was against. Uh, Steven Tyler, the Aerosmith guy. Steven Tyler? Uh, he went on Joe Rogan's podcast and basically said how... Uh, yeah, you know, Sp Spotify is not helping out artists. It, it it cashes itself out a whole lot more through ad revenues, through um, through uh, users paying for their premium plan, uh, and it doesn't really pay their artists very well. It actually pays record companies a lot more. So if you're affiliated with a record company, um, the record company is getting a bigger cut of the deal uh, than the artists are. So with Rogan. Uh, that was on Rogan's podcast. So he was against it then, and now he gets paid $100 million on board with Spotify by December, exclusively on Spotify. Uh, Rogan has a, a, about 190 million subscribers, uh, or, or he gets 190 million downloads, something along those lines, uh, that are all now going to have to download Spotify to get his podcast. They're all going to have to download that. So that's a huge fucking bump for for people downloading Spotify, and their their um, their 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 stocks just went up by eleven percent after making this announcement. Uh, their revenue comes specifically from ads, and they keep most of it. Uh, and with podcasting, they don't really have to share a whole lot of their revenue in this model. Um, like my podcast is on Spotify still, you know, because I use Libsyn and Libsyn distributes to Spotify. That's one of the things that they do distribute to. And, uh, I get, again, it's like, I get some downloads, but it's like, I don't really see any currency from them. They don't, they don't cash out on their podcasts. They, they will probably cash out through ad partnerships for Joe Rogan, for The Ringer, for some of these larger podcasts that they have. Um, but uh, I don't, I mean, like the small fries and stuff. Like my buddy Dan's podcast, uh, What in the History, is not fucking getting any money. Uh, it was also revealed that Joe Rogan makes about $75,000 per episode through his own ads. So now you got to look at who advertises with Joe Rogan? Who's advertising with The Ringer? Because all of that is now going to be filtered through Spotify. So Joe Rogan gets to keep his own ad revenue, right? So he's probably going to get to keep that $75,000 per episode because they're specifically his thing. <laughs> but what is, what, is, what is stopping Spotify from going to his advertisers and trying to make an exclusive kind of contract with them? to say, hey, um, we would like you to advertise with us and we will exclude, we will 100% play you in, in front of Joe Rogan and you can still have your ad contracting with Joe Rogan. So it complicates the ad model just a little bit. Um, 
but now they'll like cash app. Uh Oh, ca okay. Cash app is not going to start advertising, um, in front of podcasts on Spotify. New, new listeners means new, more ad revenue because right. More people are going to be listening to those ads. Uh, it's based on per download per song or playlist or however it is. Uh, they have to spend less in giving back to artists because they have a ton of podcasts now. Now that Joe Rogan's on there, more people are going to want to be on Spotify because the Rogan listeners are on Spotify and maybe I'll get a little bit of, I'll get a little bump because, you know, my podcast is coming up in the same genre or gets recommended. Uh, if you listen to Joe Rogan, maybe listen to Forkful of Noodles, maybe listen to Taboo Tabletop. Oh, so I got, I better, I better jump on that Spotify train. But I'm, but you know, these smaller podcasts aren't getting anything out of it. Not only that, there's also uh, records that if you are a premium member of Spotify, you still get ads. So they double dip on the ad revenue. Now they get money to also create their own podcasts. That's the future of, of Spotify is Spotify exclusive podcasting, which are going to have their own bias, which they have a very neoliberal bias, uh, in my opinion. So that also means that that's less money out of their pockets. So they get to keep even more of their ad revenue. They have more people downloading their platform and it becomes Spotify versus every other podcasting avenue. Like it became YouTube versus every other video distribution platform. Right. Like Vimeo is like it's really hard for for me to put anything up on Vimeo because uh, I have to purchase a bunch of space on Vimeo and I don't have the currency to do that. Um, but maybe I will get seen by more people on Vimeo. I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it or not. It's you know, so it's a, for, for someone like me, it's just a difficult gamble to take. Um, so it, be it becomes this battle. For do you go on this big conglomerate that basically can throttle you and censor you at any moment, not really give you any reasons for doing it, or do you keep doing what you're doing? I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna keep cho choosing to do what I'm doing, right? So, I'll, like, I, I mentioned about two months ago that I have cut back on what audio podcasts I upload because of space. Um, and the amount of funds that I have to allocate uh, to said podcast. Um, but I mean, I can't, I'm not going to exclusively go just to Spotify. And I, I mean, I, I, I barely, barely use Spotify as it is. I'm switching all of my stuff to Pandora. I've been working on that for a little while. Cause I did, I mean, I did build, I built like a bunch of playlists and stuff. Like I don't, I don't recommend Spotify to people anymore. Uh, not just that too, is like, this is also a data privacy issue because now they're going to collect your data as a user based on what podcasts you listen to and target your ads specifically to that. So they, they can also sell your data to the advertisers that they have. And they're going to use Joe Rogan and the ringer as a vehicle in order to do that, uh, which is also a major problem, which is also a major problem. All in all, this, this deal doesn't seem like it uh, benefits anybody other than Spotify. That's what I think. I think Spotify essentially found their cash cow. Uh, Joe Rogan's still going to be a multimillionaire. He's still going to do his podcast and get, you know, millions and millions of downloads and listens. Um, Spotify is going to, their stocks already went up. Their stocks are probably due to continue to go up. And I was kind of waiting for this sort of shit to happen. Um, I had a friend of mine that posted John Krasinski. If you're familiar with John Krasinski, he's from The Office, probably most famous for The Office. Uh, but he's also done movies like A Quiet Place, um, he's in talks to like everybody wants him to be Reed Richards uh, when they do Fantastic Four in the MCU. Uh, dude's been doing something called Some Good News and did it independently on his YouTube channel. It ended up getting like uh, a bajillion subscribers, 
right? Um, because he's a famous guy. So he's, uh, you know, once he starts doing some stuff. Uh, and it was a cute kind of feel-good uh, popcorn show where he was talking about, like, what people are doing to keep their spirits up, right? Talking about the good news and stuff. Well, it's been acquired by Viacom. The, eight episodes. They aired for eight weeks, and it, and it got enough hits that it got acquired by Viacom. Um, and he's no longer going to host it. it. The concept is going to be similar, but Viacom's going to do what Viacom's going to do with it. And, uh, you know, it's like in the beginning of all this, I had a feeling something like that would happen where we were going to see these big fucking money deals go down where people are going to start doing independent projects like what John Krasinski did, or they're going to take existing independent projects, which we're going to see a bigger spike in like the Joe Rogan podcast. I'm sure a lot of people started listening to, to Joe Rogan, especially since during the election, um, First of all, every single fucking candidate wanted to be on Joe Rogan, right? Like Joe Biden's campaign was calling Joe Rogan fucking Klobuchar and Mayor Pete. Uh, they all wanted to talk to Joe Rogan um, and he declined them. And then the establishment pretty much went after him uh, and, and trashed him for no fucking reason. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that spiked his numbers. And I'm sure the pandemic spiked his numbers as well, which meant that, okay, Somebody's going to have to offer them more money to come exclusively be on their platform. And that's essentially what happened with Spotify. And that's essentially what happened with Viacom. Any celebrity doing anything right now um, is likely to probably get some kind of a big money fucking deal. There are touring artists in this country that are struggling on a daily basis. Me aside, there's a lot of my friends, a lot of other very talented people that I know that have switched uh, and adapted to doing something different that are getting looked over because of things like this, uh, which is the other half of what is very disappointing about all this is because you have extremely talented people that are going to get looked over. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would wager to bet that John Krasinski wasn't the only one that was doing a feel-good po uh, popcorn podcasty show. I'm not saying it was bad. I watched a couple episodes. They seemed fine. They, they were mindless entertainment. There are a bunch of other podcasts where people talk to... Shane Moss does a great podcast called Here We Are. It, like, Discovery Channel didn't fucking pick that up. Where he, he talks to academics about what their research is. It's a fantastic podcast. I will admit that I have not kept up on it since this pandemic started because it was primarily a podcast I listened to when I was driving. And I have not been doing a lot of long-distance long driving but I catch his, uh, I catch the clips that he throws up on Instagram. He got, he was very generous enough to come do my podcast. Uh, Shane Moss is getting a call from Discovery Channel, and he's somebody that has made his career from touring, made his career from these really interesting and creative projects. Still talks to interesting people, just like Joe Rogan does. Spotify's not knocking on his door to do an exclusive deal, and I don't think he would take it. These exclusive deals are not, they don't help anybody but these corporations. What are Joe Rogan listeners getting out of this? I, I really don't see what they're getting out of this. Now they just have to go to Spotify. That's it. I, I mean, honestly, like, if he ended up going just on Spotify and kept all of his other, like... I fine. I would have been fine with that. But the fact that it's an exclusivity contract, this exclusive licensing agreement, that's kind of what I have an issue with. This doesn't help anybody but Spotify. And for somebody that three and a half months ago was saying that uh, Spotify doesn't treat their, their artists properly, so I can't support them. It's, it's very, very strange. And I like Joe Rogan. I really did. Um, and I probably kind of still do, although it's moving down the list a little bit. 
I think he puts up interesting interviews and interesting content, and I enjoy listening to them, and I enjoyed watching them on YouTube. That's a that's where I watch a bunch of shit. And now it's not going to be on there anymore. And now a bunch of, uh, and now a platform that essentially censored and deleted me. So I do have some sort of personal bias against it. It's going to have this podcast on there. And how many other podcasts are they going to buy out? This also shows up that they can do this to any content that they don't like. So if they wanted to buy them out, um, they could, they could buy up a smaller podcast that they, you know, that, that has a, episodes that they disagree with and then and then put in and say, hey, we're just not going to upload your podcast anymore. We're going to figure out what we want to do with that. That's also a possibility. That, that Pandora's box is now open, that they can go to a smaller podcast, offer them $100 million and say, hey, you're now on our platform, so you kind of have to listen to what we're doing. We threw money at you to do it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they went to Joe Rogan uh, in, in 2021, if, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some stories about Spotify um, trying to censor Joe Rogan more than YouTube. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going to take a look at the comment that we got. Uh, Jeff Harris, very interested in this part of the conversation. I hope you, I hope you found it interesting. Um, and your question, as artists, how are we going to get Spotify to change their money distribution model? Uh, the stream pool to their user centric. That's a good question. I mean, really, it's I, I don't have an exact answer for that. The only the only thing I can say is um, encourage people to go to other platforms. So if you're a uh, a podcaster, um, if you're an, if you're a musician, comedian, spoken word, whatever and you have something on Spotify, because like I said, um, having something on Spotify for, for as much as I don't like it as a platform, it is a status thing. It's like clubs will fucking ask me if I'm on Spotify, you know, or like venues or bookers or whoever, just because it's like a thing that they can throw on a poster. Cause you know, um, people that aren't so savvy, people that aren't looking into the to, into the little nuances of things. And I disagree with that viewpoint. I think, I think, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of relate back in your everyday life that relate back to politics anyway, whatever, that's a different argument, but, um, they don't pay attention to this sort of stuff. So what, what we can do is encourage people to go to other platforms. Like I don't share a Spotify link. Um, a lot of times I might've shared one or two, you know, but I don't really share Spotify links. If I can find the website, um, like I'm on Libsyn. If I find other podcasts that I like that are on Libsyn, I'll share their Libsyn link. Um, I'll share their Stitcher link. Um, I don't really share the Spotify link very much. Um, so that's something we can do. You know, and even if it is, let's say collectively, it ends up being about a thousand people that aren't on Spotify anymore, that aren't using that platform as much anymore. Um, that That's still hurting them where their money is. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a bunch of, uh, I, I haven't seen it. I've seen more commenters like myself. And I think, I think Jimmy Dore is the only other person that really talked about it in, in some capacity. Um, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if more people come out and they kind of boycott this a little bit. Um, and I'm, I have to do my research on, on the psychology and stuff behind boycotts and whether boycotts do work or, or they don't work or in what capacity they do work. But I, I do, I do think that they do work in some capacity, um, and encouraging people to go to your website or go to your Libsyn page or go to you know, a downloading it on Stitcher or whatever, whatever other app that you, that you suggest. I think that's a better move. Like I'm off anchor, you know, did it, did it increase my expenses because of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. It did. Um, anchor was a free platform and I was making like, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks a month, um, by doing some of their sponsored content. Um, I said, fuck it. It's not worth it. And I'm basically spending about a hundred bucks, um, on, uh, on hosting fees with Libsyn 
I'm getting a lot more exposure and a lot more downloads through Libsyn because I think Libsyn puts it on more platforms. And I think Libsyn is a more search accessible platform. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really get a lot of listens from Spotify. So I think Anchor was more geared to trying to get people to listen to you on Spotify than they were on other platforms. So again, it's like there is a bias even with me using their hosting platforms. I don't know. I, I yeah, but we might not get them to change their model. I think their ad centric model, because your because your their their model is really more ad centric than it is anything else. Like I said, even if you're a premium member, they are still playing ads, um, especially in front of especially in front of podcasts, they're still playing ads. So they get to double dip and get, and, and still make more money off of, off of podcasting. So I don't encourage anybody to, um, to listen to my stuff on, on Spotify. <laughs> like I just, you know, it's just like, they, they're, they're not particularly great. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I hope this was a satisfying answer. Um, to your, to your question, it's not really a hopeful answer, uh, but I, I, I will I will say that I I, I find more um, I don't know I, I find it more satisfying to go directly to the source itself, um, you know. So I encourage people to watch these videos either on my Facebook page because that helps me with the with the social media bullshit, uh, or to go directly to my YouTube channel, or better yet, follow my website and watch it on my website. I post all of my videos and I post all of my stuff to my website. So if, um, you know, if, if, if you're looking to really find a place to, to, uh, to get my podcasts, boom, there it is. Um, pretty much the conclusion I've shared with, uh, and others have shared. Yeah. I think that's, that's sort of the right way to go. Uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you know, you, you, you got something out of that answer. Um, so yeah, that's my big encouragement to people is if you have a problem with it, Hey, maybe fucking tell Joe Rogan, right? He's got, he's on Twitter or whatever. Tell him, Hey, I think going to Spotify is not a great idea. Here's why. And, and, and see what happens. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to listen to Joe Rogan after 2020. If you want my honest opinion, I like the guy. Uh, I think he's a he's a decent interviewer. He's had some really interesting guests on. He had some really interesting um, conversations, and I've used them as sources on my videos because a lot of the things that you know they they are like accredited people on his um, on his podcast. Uh, but once he moves to Spotify, you know, I get that I have a little bit of a personal bias towards it. I don't think I'm going to listen to his podcasts going forward. Um, yeah, I think that's sort of my conclusion with it. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel for, uh, for more. There's going to be daily videos going up uh, on this channel. Uh, I am also uh, going to be performing virtual live stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. Uh, I've done a couple of these, and they've been super, super fun. So thank you to all the people that have already purchased tickets and uh, come out to these shows on a regular basis. They're, they're pretty fun. I'm going to be doing them every single Friday in the month of June. Tickets are available for those right now on my website at krishmohan.com. So it's June 5th, June 12th, June 19th, and June 26th going at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, if you're in the other time zones, I think you can figure out what, what time that <laughs> these shows are going to be on. Uh, they are going to be, each show is going to be a little bit different. They're going to be covering topics like the one uh, in the video that you just watched. Uh, again, you can grab your tickets at krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N every Friday at June, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and, uh, if you are a sustaining member, you get a free ticket to every single one of these shows, uh, and you can become a sustaining member over, uh, on my website as well. And, uh, I know, I know times are tough, uh, so if you are in a financially precarious situation, please send me a message, uh, or an email. 
and I will happily give you a code that will get you a, uh, a free ticket to attend these shows. Uh, I'm also releasing my brand new stand-up comedy album, which if you're a sustaining member, you get an early, uh, early release version of, early, uh, early copy of. Uh, it is available on my Bandcamp page to pre-order right now, and it comes out June 1st. So you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com, get, uh, get your copy of it uh, for only a dollar. You can pre-order it for only a buck. If you want to donate a little bit more, that would be awesome as well. Uh, there are more videos like this coming up. I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, a bunch of live streams pretty regularly from my Facebook page and uploading and releasing videos via the YouTubes and uh, and the, on the audio podcast versions as well. So stay tuned. Make sure that you like, make sure that you share, and make sure that you're subscribed to these pages because content like this often gets uh gets suppressed so uh thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for hanging out and uh till the next one we'll see you on the road thanks